our special guest, Enid native, Dr. Trent Hulse. Dr. Hulse, welcome. Thank yeah, you thank for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having uh, me. We appreciate you being here. And uh, we, as we say, we have a little tag team event that we're okay. going to go on. So we'll just uh, uh, play 20 questions with you real quick. Right. Good morning, Dr. Hulse. Good morning. It's awesome to have you here this yeah, morning. Thank you. Um, we do want to know everything about you. Okay. So tell us briefly <laughs> about your background and your role at St. Mary's. Okay. Um, was born and raised here in Enid, uh, went to Enid High School, graduated from there, and then went on to uh, OU to receive my undergraduate degree. And then and that was four years, and then I went on to medical school at the Health Science Center uh, in Oklahoma City. Um, that was four years, and then I did my five years of orthopedic surgery residency at OU and McBride down in uh, Oklahoma City. So, and then uh, right after that, came back home. So, good to be home. And Dr. Holson, doing some little preparation for our interview, I was looking on some information in regard to baby boomers. I fit into that category, and they were listing the top 10 uh, health concerns for baby boomers. Mm -hmm. And some of the topics were um, heart conditions, uh, Alzheimer's, cancer, depression was one of those, and also diabetes, and the list went on. But also, one of the concerns, the top 10 concerns, was arthritis and joint replacement. And that it really kind of surprising to me. The cancer and the heart, those those all kind of fit in there as mm -hmm. a baby boomer. But would you right off the bat, would you define arthritis and why has that topic, joint replacement and arthritis, why is it an issue for baby boomers? Well, uh, you know, arthritis uh, literally is just inflammation of the joints, and okay. so. There's a lot of different types of arthritis, um, but the main one that we know of is osteoarthritis, which is kind of the wear and tear arthritis. Um, so that's the one that is more associated with age. And so uh, as the baby boomers are, are aging, uh, they are experiencing some of this wear and tear arthritis. Uh, and then, you know, it's, it's something that you can't avoid. Um, and it happens just about everybody eventually. And so um, it is something that, uh, you know, you have to think about and that most people will experience. And, and uh, so they're going to want to start looking at options for, you know, how to relieve their pain and, and stuff like that. So um, it is a big issue for them. And, and uh, but the good news is, is there are definitely procedures and treatments out there that can help them, you know, live a, a full and active life even into their uh, older years. So I think I hurried up our conversation a little bit. I know that Sarah was going to ask you about the arthritis. So I appreciate mm -hmm. your uh, defining that because we hear the term arthritis mm -hmm. quite often. But we also hear about joint replacement, um, right. especially for the, the boomers. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about that joint replacement? Yeah, uh, you know, the most common ones that are performed would be the hip and the knee. Um, there are also other joints that can be uh, replaced, shoulders and elbows and things like that. But I think the most common ones are the hip and the knee. And, and uh, so specifically for us here in Enid, we, um, me specifically, I operate at St. Mary's uh, mostly, and they have a, a wonderful joint institute um, that has a whole program um, preoperatively and postoperatively for uh, joint replacement. You know, it is a, it's a big surgery uh, to get your joint replaced. Um, but nowadays the recovery has been advanced significantly than it was before. You know, it used to be people being in the hospital for weeks at a time after their joint replacement. Now they're staying one, maybe two nights, uh, and then they're going back home. So, um, so it's really the advances have, have come a long ways, um, and so it's not something to be uh, super scared of anymore because it's uh, it's a really good option once you get to that point of uh, of arthritis. Dr. Hulse, I, I fit into that baby boomer boomer category, but I also uh, was a person that's had an active lifestyle. I ran competitive in high school and college, mm -hmm. and I've run marathons and just been active all my life. And I did so thinking that it was going to keep me healthy. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to have aches and pains. Right, but several hours ago when I woke up this morning, there was a lot of aches and pains when I'm getting out of the bed. And I'm thinking, this is not what I signed up for. I've stayed active all my life, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't feel this way. So um, I have those aches and pains. When do you know it's time for the knee or joint replacement? When, when does a person say, okay, I can't take the pain anymore and I've got to do something? Right. So, you know, like I said, it is a, a big surgery and it's a big decision to undergo a joint replacement. Um, and so, you know, I think you have to get to the point, um, like you said, that you just wake up and, and, and tell yourself, I, I just can't do this anymore. You know, I need to do something else. I've tried everything. I've tried exercises and injections and all the different treatment options. 
Um, but, and what I tell my patients, uh, you know, that it is a big decision. So you need to make some life plans around that. But, um, you know, your body's going to tell you. Uh, when you finally realize and you wake up and you say, I, I, I can't do this anymore. You know, I need to do something else to be able to walk pain free. Uh, and so that's, that's what I tell my patients. You know, you can have bone on bone arthritis that people like to talk about. But I see plenty of people with bone on bone arthritis that are doing just fine. You know, they, they can manage it symptomatically. So just because you have really bad arthritis, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need a joint replacement. It's more based upon your kind of quality of life and how much pain you're in on a daily basis and whether or not, you know, you've tried everything else uh, short of surgery, so. Okay. Talked about pain. So regarding pain, what is your take on CBD oils? Yeah, that's uh, obviously a pretty hot topic uh, nowadays. You know, you see all the CBD plus sh shops uh, opening up and... Kind of overnight. Yeah, I just, <laughs> and I didn't really know much about it still, you know, or is a little bit... Uh, you know, unsure of, of what it, exactly it is. You know, it kind of falls into, I think, the supplement category. It's not necessarily an FDA-approved uh, medication. So I think there's still some literature to be, you know, investigated about its, you know, effectiveness for pain. Um, so I don't necessarily want to come out and say, oh, it's great, it, you, can, you can take this and all your pain is going to go away. I don't think it's to there yet. However, you know, I think it's very well documented that our country has a significant opioid problem, uh, an epi epidemic really. Uh, and so I think it's well worth our time and effort to investigate all alternative options um, that are non-narcotic in nature because it's, you know, narcotics are a, are a nasty drug and so we want to try to find something else. Uh, and C CBD may be helpful in that arena for some people uh, and that's okay. I think the side effect profile is pretty minimal, um, but I think before we would come out and just recommend it as an alternative, you know, there's some, some, some more investigation that need to be done, so. Good morning, Enid. It is Thursday, August 16th. Our very special guest, Enid Native, Dr. Trent Hulse with us from St. Mary's. Uh, as you're planning your day, the wardrobe of choice probably will be shorts, because it'll be, if you can't wear shorts, going to warm up to around 91 degrees today, and right now it's in the lower 70s. I talked a little bit earlier, Dr. Hulse, about the fact of my mindset is if I stayed active and exercised that I'm not going to have any aches and pains later on. <clears throat> the other day at the gym, one of my friends came up to me and goes, man, my shoulders are killing me and, and it really hurt and the uh, doctor said I have bursitis. So the question is, can too much exercise or lack of exercise, how does that impact our, our joint function? Because he had the same mindset that he lifted weights and stayed active, he's not going to have bursitis mm -hmm. so where do, where do we find that the yeah. magical line of uh, not overdoing it I guess yeah it's <clears throat> it's tough you know um, I think a lot of people worry that or or claim that you know if they were really active in their younger years then that's why they have arthritis and there's been a, many many studies with thousands of people that have looked at you know the really active versus the not so active and followed them over 20 30 years uh, to see who gets arthritis and who doesn't it turns out there is no, no link okay. to exercise and arthritis. There are the same amount of people who were really active versus the people that were not active, you know, the same amount of people got arthritis. So it's not wow. activity related to a certain degree. Now, I think there are some significantly high impact exercises that you could do that would maybe lead, you know, predispose you to a little bit of arthritis, but, but you're just day to day, you know, jogging and, and swimming and cycling. Those are, the, those are the best exercises to do that actually will prevent um, you know, help, the health benefits far outweigh the, the risks of that. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, I don't think there's really a significant link between exercise and arthritis. Okay. 